Okay, Cedric. All right. Law of cosines. Just like in the law of sines, our textbook loves to show you where these formulas come from. Some people just take a nap. And because you know I'm never going to ask you to prove it, the law of cosines, where it came from. But I, it, is, it is one of the things that's in the uh, descriptors of what you're supposed to learn. The derivation. Where does it come from? How can we prove that, that formula? And so I really care more about using them. And I would love to get to the area formula using Heron's formula, but you're gonna have to get that from the video that's already posted in Dits Learning, okay? Because I, I know I won't get through it. I haven't got that far in any class yet. You're the last one. A uh, little reminder. The triangle side length restriction that the sum of any two sides of a triangle, they have to be greater than the other side. If not, what happens is you have this side of a triangle, then you have this side of a triangle, and then your third side is, uh oh, it's too short. It can't reach. So the sum of uh, so side one and side two that has to be greater than the third side or else it will not make a triangle, okay? It comes up because when you're solving different sides and uh, like if you're given three angles, well, three angles don't determine how long sides are. And so angle, angle, angle was never one of your congruence, okay? All right, derivation. Let's take an, an oblique triangle. Oblique means it's not a right angle. And so you're gonna have to have uh, a larger angle. And he, he sits it on this uh, XY plane. So that's triangle ABC. So right away, here's A, here's B, here's C. Now you need to realize that if this side is opposite of angle A, we call it side A. And this side is opposite side B. We call it side B. And so forth with side C being across the street from angle C. But we're not going to use that triangle to derive law of sides. It's kind of interesting that he doesn't use that triangle. That's the triangle that I want to solve. But a derivation, how it comes from, is drop in altitude. Drop an altitude from this angle that's sitting in quadrant two. Make it a right triangle. And just say, I don't know what this distance is. So I call it X. I don't know what this distance is. I call it Y. And the reason is we're going to derive the law of cosines from the distance formula that connects A to C. We're going to connect those and find the distance of this. And that distance formula will prove the law of cosines. But right now I'm not gonna use that distance. I'm gonna use this triangle right here, the smaller triangle. So if this distance is distance A, because it's across the street from angle A, then that ordered pair must be A comma zero if I'm on the X axis. So I need, I'll call this point number two. I need that point. Now this point, I don't know what X is, and I don't know what Y is, so I'll call it X comma Y. But that doesn't help me very well. So he gives you the secret. It's called C cosine B comma C sine of B, but let me prove that to you. If you take this small triangle, and we talk about angle B also being an angle that is to the small triangle, as well as an angle to the big triangle, it's still angle B, it just angle B has two measures, okay? So if I wanna talk about what, what X and Y are, and this is a right angle, and I already know that this is side C because it's across the street from angle C, and this is side X and side Y. 
I know for a fact that the sine of angle B, so look here, here's a sine. Sine means opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite of that angle is a Y, and the hypotenuse is labeled a C because that's the measure it is based on angle C across the street. So that's going to be uh, Y over C. And if I solve this for Y, because I want to know what the point is, I just got X comma Y. What really is Y? I multiply both sides by the C. Cancel out, I got Y is equal to C sine of angle B. No matter what angle B is, no matter what that angle is, no matter what the side C is. Uh, talk about the cosine of this same angle right here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That gives me the X value over the C. And of course, again, I'm gonna multiply both sides by C just to get rid of the C there. And I have X equals to C cosine of B. That's where this came from. Now you might say, well, how does that help? Well, it doesn't really help. you. The, the ordered pair now becomes X comma Y. That means cosine. C cosine of B and C sine of B. Now point C, we already talked about point C. It's A comma zero. And AC has a length. Let's see, what's the length of AC? The length of AC is a B. Is that AC? Yeah, AC is the length B. So it has a length B. Then he says again, the point A has coordinates. I don't know why he's repeating it, but he's repeating it. He's redundant. But I'm a team player, so I will write it out. I'm assuming it's the same answer. I, I, I'm making it up. I'm not really sure. But then now what we're going to do is, since I really care about how long C is, I'm going to use the distance formula. So let me remind you what distance formula is. If I'm going from one point to another point, and that has an X value, I'll call it X1 and a Y1, and this point has a X2 and a Y2, which is my second point. Remember what the distance formula is. The distance formula is the square root of the differences of the X's, X1 minus X2 squared, plus the differences of the Y's, so plus y1 minus y2 squared. Now, really, guys, you, we had this conversation before that really what it is is the Pythagorean theorem. This distance here is the differences of your x's. It's the x1 minus x2. This distance is the differences of the y's, which is y1 minus y2. But to make it easy, I can just call this A, and I can call this B, and I can call this C. And I can say that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, which is a Pythagorean theorem. And, and, and that's basically what I have here. C is the square root of the differences of the X's plus the differences of the Y's, both being squared. But I'm going to use this right now because I want to plug in these two points. This was point one, and this is point two, as I labeled right there. So he's already done the squaring both sides. I thought we were looking for B. He's looking for B. Okay. I wrote C over there because I, I didn't see it. We're looking for B. So instead of saying B squared, he starts out with B as the square root. That's a distance formula. So the difference of my x's, remember, I'm going to look right here. It says this is one point and this is another point. Or you can say this, it can use these two, whatever. One of the x's, I'll go with the cosine of b, c cosine of b. c cosine of b minus a. That is the difference of my x's, so I square it, plus the difference of my y's, I'll go with C sine of B minus the zero squared. And it's all under the square root. 
because he set up the distance formula. But I, but I, I need to finish solving this. I'm going to square both sides to get rid of that square root. So b squared is simply c cosine of b uh, minus a, all of it squared, plus c sine of b minus 0. I'm just going to leave it as c sine of b squared. Now the algebra has to happen. Remember how I do x plus y squared or a plus b. You square the first term, you square the last term, and in the middle you multiply these two together and you double it plus 2xy. Do the same thing. Square the first term, so that's c cosine of b times c cosine of b gives me c squared cosine squared b. And then when I square the a, minus a times minus a gives me a plus a squared. Now I got to take the inside, and that's an a times a c times a cosine of b, double it. That gives me plus 2ac cosine of b. That's this bi binomial square. Wouldn't it be a negative, the middle part? Because it's a negative. The middle, it would be. Thank you for catching that. Minus a times c is negative ac, and I double it. Thank you, Emilio. Now I got plus. This is just this thing squared. So that gets squared, that gets squared. c squared sine squared b. I'm looking at it and say, well, what the heck can I do to simplify this? Because we're still looking for b squared, b squared. And so what I'm going to do is I notice something that this term here and this term here, they look very similar. They both have the c squared. So I'm going to move them together just to be, to be nice because they're lonely. c squared cosine squared b. I'll put it up here with plus c squared sine squared b. And then the minus 2ac cosine of b plus a squared are loners. They're by themselves. Now, when I look at this now, you can see that these terms, I could factor out the c squared. And that leaves me with a, let me put them in the order that I'm used to sine squared b plus cosine squared b. And then what I'll probably do is put the a squared and minus 2ac times the cosine of b. OK, I just moved it around to make it look pretty. Really quick, what is the identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared of the exact same angle? What is sine? Say it again. One. You know, you're the third class, and and it I didn't get anybody to answer it that quick. And I, that should be your first identity we had, that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. 1 times c squared is c squared. Then I have the plus a squared. Then I have the 2ac cosine of b that I can't do nothing with. So what I have just created was one of the forms of law of cosines. There's actually three of them, but I want you to pay attention for a minute. We have three sides. Pay attention to the fact that this is B squared. Pay attention to the fact that the angle over here is B. They go together. Pay attention to the fact that I have another side called C and another side called A. And they're both being squared. So that's very typical. If you start with the B, then you need a C and an A. If you start with the A, you need a, a B and a C. If you start with the B, then you need the A and the C. In here, after the minus two, they always have a minus two, A and C are the exact same two sides that I used here before I squared it. So now you know where everything comes. And if you look at the next page, it gives you all three of them. And you should see what I just said was true. If you're talking about A, you need to have a relationship with the A angle. If you're starting with the B, you need to have the relationship with the B angle, C, C angle. If you are starting with the A squared, then you have to add up the other two sides squared. 
If you start with B squared, I knew the other two sides squared. You start with C squared, I knew the other two sides squared. Inside here are the same two angles, B and C, or A and C, or A and B. So there's your three formulas, depending on the makeup of your triangle. Then he breaks this up into words. This took me a lot yesterday to figure out what he wanted. That is according to the law of sines, the square of a side is my guess. The square of a side, the square of a side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus two minus two times, I, the, I don't know, maybe two times should be in the same blank, because it's the product <coughs> of the other two sides. Then, and the product of the, the product of those two sides and the product and that's cosine of the angle Maybe the word is just in between them. I, I put I put uh, included between them, but maybe the word is in between them. That sounds good too. Then he gives us a reflection. What if C, big C, so we're talking about using the angle C, what if it was 90 degrees? He wants to know what theorem pops out. Well, you can't look at that and just know it. Let's Let's look at it. Let's do C squared equals to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of 90 degrees. What is the cosine of 90? And we should have it memorized because the cosine of 90, 90 is up here. So what's the cosine of that angle? when that ordered pair is zero comma one, what is the cosine of that angle? Zero. Cosine zero. The X value is your cosine, the Y value is your sine. When you're on the unit circle, remember? So what happens is all of this, negative two times a number times a number times the cosine of 90 turns into zero. It, all, it basically goes away. So what am I left with? What theorem is that? The Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, that's right. So in other words, the Pythagorean theorem works for all equations, all triangles, I should say. Even if the angle's not 90, it just so happens if the angle is 90, it makes a difference. This really is the Pythagorean theorem. It's just that we're used to a 90 degree angle. But if it's not 90 degree angle, you're not, it, you, this 2AB cosine of the angle is gonna be a number that you're subtracting from this. So, all right, first example. He's giving us an upfront, he's telling me that we're gonna have triangle that is side, angle side. That means I have to have a side and I have to have an angle and a side means there's an included angle in the middle there. So, What's happening here, it's a surveyor. He wishes to find the distance between the two inaccessible points A and B on opposite sides of the lake. So while standing at point C, which is right here, is over here, he finds that he can measure B and A, not a problem, because what happens is a surveyor puts their little surveyor instrument in the ground right here. It's like a camera, faces it to an object over here, maybe a flag that was put there. And he presses a button and the viewfinder tells him how long that was to get there. So then he has another flag posted over here and the viewfinder tells him how, how long that one is. Thing is, it's too far away to be over here and aim over here, that lake's too long. So he can't look across the lake. And he can't walk it, the water's really deep, so he can't take a measuring tape and what not. Could have taken a boat. I don't know why you do a boat. So anyway, there's your triangle that we're looking for. Notice the two legs that include the angle because he was able to find the angle. He found the angle to be uh, 132 degrees and 40 minutes. 
because it says it right there somewhere. Yeah, there's the angle, 132 degrees in 40 minutes. So I have everything I need to find side C is what I'm looking for. Since I'm finding side C, you know I have to start with C squared, and we know we're going to need a cosine of C over here. They go together. Okay, let's fill in the blank. C squared equals to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. Perfect. Just plug everything in. And if you want, you could, since we're looking for C, you could just take the square root of both sides right now and realize that this is what I'm doing. I'm going to plug everything in. As I write these out, I do need your help. I, if, if you don't help me, you're just going to get an answer that I think the, that I had earlier today or yesterday. And I, and I move on and, and I say to you, good luck. You can work it out yourself. But anyway, that would be the square root A is 42.3. So that's going to be squared. B was, and, and it's not 42.3, it's 423, no point. Um, 259. So right about now, somebody should have already squared that number and somebody else could have squared that number. So when I ask for it, we'll have it. Minus two times 423 times 259 times the cosine and that angle is 132 degrees and 40 minutes. 132 degrees and 40 minutes. Look again, I did the wrong tick mark. I need only one tick mark. It's not seconds, it's minutes. So that's all square rooted. We're going to use our calculator, but just for now, let's see if people were paying attention here. Do I have an answer for 423 squared? Seven, one, seven, eight, nine, two, nine. And did somebody else do the square of 259? Six, 67, um, 81. 67, mm -hmm. 081. Six, 67, 081. 67,000, not 6,6. Six. Yeah, 67. And 81, 0, 081? Yeah. Minus. Did anybody do the product of these three numbers? Two hundred twenty thousand one fifty. Seven hundred and twenty thousand. Two hundred twenty thousand. Two hundred and twenty thousand. And what? One fifty. And then I'm not going to ask anybody for the cosine because that's going to be a calculated problem, obviously cosine. But when I use my calculator, I got to key it in as uh, if you remember how we do that. One thirty two plus. 40 divided by 60. That's the degrees that we're typing in. 40 divided by 60 is being added to the 132. So now that I get you all to cooperate, we could keep on going and keep on going and break it and add it, but I'm gonna go right to my calculator. So in my, can we clear everything? I'm gonna start out with the square root button, may as well. And I know I already had a lot of people help me with numbers, but uh, it was a 423 squared. It was a uh, 259 squared. It was a minus two times, that's how I would key it in my calculator, 423 and uh, 259, what I have up there. Then I had the cosine of that, uh, that angle was 132 and 40 minutes. So it's 132 plus 40 divided by 60. So everything's keyed in. I just made sure that I wrote down the numbers correctly on my paper. And then before I hit enter, I'll just double check. Does that look 259, 423, 
So 259 squared 420. Yeah, I think it's good. So I hit enter and it looks like that uh, 0. 0.1007 is so small. I'm just gonna round it to 628 uh, meters, okay? So go back to it. I'm gonna say C is approximately 628 meters. And that was a side angle side problem. Any questions before I go on to the second problem? No picture, you didn't do any favors. You said triangle ABC. So I'm just gonna draw A, B, C, I know B's in the middle. And he gave me angle A is 42.3. So I'm glad he didn't give me minutes. So 42.3 was there. And side B is 12.9. So that has to be across the street from B, 12.9. So you should draw your pictures. And side C is 15.4. So that's over here, 15.4 meters. And I can tell you right now that it's a side angle side, which is very useful for law of cosine he wants me to solve the triangle, but just like in lesson one, or just like we did in another chapter, we were solving right triangles, but this is not a right triangle. Solving means find all the angles and find all the sides. So I'm missing two angles and I'm missing a side. I'm missing side A. Well, in order to use law of cosines, I need to use an angle. I have to have an angle that matches up with the side that I'm looking for, or I have to have the uh, the side and the missing angle. One or the other, they go together. So if I set this up, A squared must be equal to, that's across from A, I may as well find A first right off the bat. And let's see what I'm gonna say, B squared plus C squared minus two BC cosine of the included angle, which is angle A. So A is going to be the square root. I may as well write all those numbers out so that way I can put it in my calculator. You should write them out first so you have something to look at. Uh, uh, side a, a B was 1 was 12.9 squared. Side C was 15.4 squared minus 2 times 12.9 times 15.4. And all I'm missing now is the cosine of the angle that he gave me as 42.3 degrees, 42.3 degrees. So I can go right now to my calculator and key that in. And that's gonna give me at least one more side. So go to my calculator, second square root, and let's key what I just said. I said a 12.9 and I'm gonna square it. And I'm gonna add that to the uh, 15 something, 15.4, uh, square it, minus two parentheses. And I'll just use the same two numbers, 12.9, close it, open, 15.4, uh, close it. Cosine of my angle, which was uh, 42.3 degrees, 42.3. So theoretically, I'm looking at it, assuming I typed everything in right, maybe back to the beginning, like what is that in front of that nine? Uh, 12.9, yeah, that's what it was. I should be able to hit enter and get the answer. And so it turns out to be that my side A is, is 10.47. I'm gonna use uh, four decimals because we're gonna might need to use that answer later and I don't wanna round it, and lose some of the precision. So I like to leave as many decimals as I can conceive. 10.4737 or 738. Uh, I'll probably round it up 4738, as long as I always round up. So A is approximately 10.473, is that what I said? So that means I have found A. So I'm just missing now two angles, B and C. Since I have a lot of stuff there, I don't have to use law of cosines again. 
I can use law of sines now. I don't have to use law of cosines unless you want to. But I think I'm going to use the law of sines since I already have one good answer. And let's let's look for side uh, or angle B. And the reason I'm choosing angle B is because it's obvious that angle C, angle C has to be larger than angle A. Let's see, would it be larger than A? Well, C is definitely larger than B because the sides, look at, this is 12.9 and this is 15.4. So this angle has to be larger than B. So let's find the smaller of the two. So I wanna find angle B. That's usually a pretty good strategy. So I'm gonna look for angle B because I know it's smaller than C. If you go for the smaller of the choices, you won't have any ambiguous problems. So let me use law of sines. Law of sines said that sine of A over A must equal to sine of B over B, which also equals to, if you needed it, sine of C over C, but I don't need this part. I just need this part here because I'm looking for angle, angle B. So sine of A, and, and I think A was the angle given to me is 42.3 degrees. And we already found A. I wrote down A is 10.4738. So I'm gonna write down 10.4378 equals to the sine of B, and I don't know B. And do I know sides B? Side B was that 12.9. Now, another thing you could also do, guys, since it's obvious that the author rounded to the 10th place, there are people who would just use the 10.5. And, and, and you will be at least semi-accurate, you know, uh, but uh, more decimals are always better till the very end. So to find sine of B, I know sine of B has to be equal to, if I move that over to the other side, is a 12.9 times sine of 42.3, all divided by my answer, 10.4378. Did someone key those three things in for me? 12.9 times sine of 42.3 divided by 10.4378. Okay, if not, you're not gonna have it written down. Whatever that answer is. To get the angle B, I need to do the arc sign of that mystery answer. So if I don't have that answer, I can't show it to you. I can only give you what the answer is gonna come out. B, angle B comes out of, when I do the arc sign, nobody? It becomes 56.28. 56 what? 56.28. 2080, when you say 282080? Uh, no, 28, yeah, 28, 28, 28. 28, okay. That's kind of small. So he, he probably, uh, wait, that's the final answer. That's this down here. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know what, I don't know what your middle number was. That's okay. So I'm gonna round it to 56 degrees, okay? Now that's, if this is 56, let me write it in there approximately, and this is 42.3. We do know that this angle and this angle and this angle have to add up to 180. So to get angle C, because we're not done yet, to get angle C, I'm gonna take 180 degrees. I'm gonna take away the 56 that we just got and take away the answer or the first angle that he gave me, which was 42.3. So when I do all that, I get approximately around 82 degrees. 
roughly if I round it, I think. Or if, it, since I didn't keep this at one decimal, it'd been nice to kept this at one decimal. Whatever that it is was. at one decimal because it was like fifty five point ninety eight. So then it would round to sixty point zero. Oh, okay. It is round. I mean, oh, it is round to six. It was fifty six point zero then. So it is. It is one decimal. All right. So give me one decimal for this answer. Is it? It's not eighty two. It's it's eighty one something. Eighty one point seven. I'll take it. All right. So now we have all six, all three angles and all three sides. That's called solved. And uh, why can't the law of sines be used to find the measure of side A? Well, you you can now that you. Well, no, you. Oh no, you couldn't have. The original problem. We already had. Yeah, it's a good question. What, why couldn't I have used law of science from the very beginning? I, I, I had, let me choose one. Sine of A, because he gave me that answer, over A, I don't know, equals sine of B, that I don't know, over B, which I do know. I don't know B, and I didn't know a, that's two unknowns. That's why you couldn't use law of sines. You had to use law of cosines. You didn't have enough information. All right, let's move on to uh, changing it up. Side, side, side. Okay, now, something happened last period, so I don't know uh, where I went wrong. I, I wasn't really getting an answer that I remembered from before. So maybe you can pay attention because I'm telling you that the numbers didn't come out right. If I draw my triangle, arbitrarily, A, B, C, it doesn't matter. Label what he gave me. He gave me uh, side A was 9.47. That would be down here. Side B, which would be over here, was 15.9. And he gave me side C is 21.1. I didn't get any angles. But if you had three sticks with those measurements and you join them, you are only going to make one triangle. Now you got to make a decision of which angle do I want to try out for. Uh, if I'm going for an angle, I would much rather find the biggest angle first, since I have three unknowns. And I don't know what, I mean, I kind of know which was the smallest angle, the smallest angle is going to be angle A, because it's on the shorter side. Hope I keep erasing. But I'm going to stick with my guns that uh, find the large angle if I'm missing three angles. That would be C. That'd be the cosine of C would be over here, that I don't know. So I have to have C squared here, and then an A squared, and then a plus B squared, and then a minus 2AB cosine of C. I'm not going to square root both sides to get this like I did before because my missing thing is inside here. So I'm going to leave it like this. So side C, this was side, this is angle C. So side C was a 21.1. So I should write 21.1 squared, I think. Equal, uh, equals to A, it's 9.47 squared plus 15.9 squared. This kind of gets kind of boring. It does. Minus, but I don't mind it that much. I've, I've done worse stuff in my life. Two times the 9.47 times the 15.9. Um, and then I have this cosine of C that I don't know. So the simple way to solve for cosine of C is to take this 21.1 squared and uh, move this over, move this over, then divide by this, okay? So it's 21.1 squared minus the 9.43 squared minus the 15.9 squared. That's this keeping this and then subtracting, subtracting. 
Then I'm going to divide by the negative two times the nine point. Was it a three or a seven? I wrote it twice. Four seven. Where did I write a three four somewhere? It's it's a what? Four. Four seven. Point four seven. Seven. I don't know why I wrote a three. Nine point four seven. Fifteen point nine will equal to the cosine of c. So it's just a big calculator problem. So what we could do with our calculator is uh, we could just type that in the way it is. Can some memorize that for me while I go to, or, or yeah, I'll do it with you. Do make sure you're in degree mode though, 21. So if someone's got to read me those numbers, here goes. Hopefully someone's paying attention. Give me the numerator. 21.1 square. Square. Uh, minus 9.47 squared. Minus 15.9 squared. All of that. There. Yeah. All of that is divided by negative two. Negative two times 9.47. 9.47 times 15. 15.9, 15. right? Yeah. But when I hit enter now, I can close it all off if you really insist. Close it all off, I get that, that answer, okay? That would be the arc sign. Let me write that out on the other paper, 0. 0.341. Did everybody, anybody else get the same answer as me? Yes. Negative 3.34109. Cosine of C is negative point. Say it again. It was a three four one zero nine four. Nine what? Four. Four. Okay. So theoretically, I should be able to do the arc cosine of that answer, negative point three four one zero nine four. Should be able to, and get me the angle of the measure of angle C. Should be. So let me go back to my calculator and hit uh, second cosine. I want that answer. So I go second. The negative sign is the word answer. And I'm getting a 109.943. So since he's doing one decimal, he probably left it at 109.9. Probably. I'm just guessing. And I did say I'm going for the bigger angle. So no other angle could be bigger than that because that's already over 90 degrees. You can't have two obtuse angles in a triangle. So angle C is approximately 109 degrees. So now that I've found that one, uh, I'll put that here, 109.9.9. I got to find the other two angles. So you have to ask a, yourself a question. May as well use law of signs for the next one and find B or A. Now, let's look at the sizes of those. B is uh, across from 15.9. A is across from 9.47. Since I started with that big angle, let's go with the next big angle. Let's find B now. So I'm going to do, I'm looking for sine of B over B, and I'm going to use um, sine of C, because that's the one I just worked on, over C. So if I plug all that in, I don't know what the angle is, so sine of B, but side B was 15.9. Uh, sine of C is going to be the sine of my big angle, 109.9 divided by 21.1. So really all I'm gonna do is sine of B will be equal to the 15.9 times the sine of 109.9 divided by the 21.1. Now, more of you should be involved. The problem is some of you guys are not involved. So I'm gonna go to my calculator and all I care about right now is my uh, 15.9, I think it was, 
times the sine of 109.9. .9. That has to be, I'll hit enter. So I'm going to divide by the 21.1. .1. Enter, divide by the 21.1. .1. Sometimes I break it up into steps. I don't do all at once because I might make a big mistake. So that would be my decimal part. At least it's between negative one and one. So it is possible answer. Second sign will give me the archives. That was what we're looking for. Second sign of my answer. Oh, by 45.11. So that would be a angle. B is approximately 45.11 degrees. Now I have, that's 45.11. So I just found the angle B, 45.11 degrees. So I have one more angle left and guess what? All three angles have to add up to 180. So to get angle A, I have to take 180 degrees and subtract the sum of these other two angles. The 45.11 plus the 109.9. So if you do that work, anybody want to subtract that for me? You should get 25. Uh, 25, approximately 25 degrees? Uh, like 25. Uh, <laughs> point what? 25.0. Yes. Oh, it is point zero. Okay. So that's precision to one decimal place. All right. So you don't always have to use law of cosines, but... Sometimes you have to start it out with law of cosines. Oh, another one. Getting kind of tired now. How uh, much time do I got? Oh, wow. We're doing good timing here. Probably because uh, Emilio was helping a lot. And you guys are just, uh, you're missing out if you're not keeping up. We're going to design uh, a roof truss. And a roof truss is that wood that you build that looks like that. And usually you make two of them and then we can nail them into the connect it. And that's where you put your wood on top. And there you go. The trusses that triangle pieces are making. We're gonna design one and he's saying heads up, side, 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 but I can look at the picture and see side, 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 just like the last problem was. I don't even know if we need to do another one because he only wants angle B, okay? Oh, he only wants one angle. That's fine, because that makes sense. You're going to build the, on the house, and you know what, uh, what it's going to look like. So we're just going to need that one angle. And then the other two, I don't know why you don't want more than one angle. I don't know. Let's just find it. Can I use law of signs? Can I do sine of B over B equals to any other angle, sine of A over a or sine of C over C. Can I use law of sines? Because I would use law of sines if I could first. The problem is, I don't know B. I do know B, but I don't know this B. And if I use this fraction, I don't know that angle. Yeah, if I use this one, I don't know that angle. So no matter which two pairs I use, which pair I use, I'm missing two angles. I can't use law of sines. So sad, it's real sad. So we're looking for angle, what did I say? We're looking for angle B. So I'm gonna go B squared, must be equal to A squared plus B squared minus two AB cosine of big angle B, which is what I'm looking for. And if you wanna really make it simple on yourself, why don't we solve that for cosine of B right now? We've done that on the other problem. Cosine of B means I have my B squared. I'm going to take away the A squared. I'm going to take away the, that should be a C. Nobody said anything to me. My, my right, that should have been a C. Nobody said anything. That should be an AC. Don't let me find my own mistakes. B squared minus a squared minus the c squared. Take that and divide it by a negative two a c. No, not, not that, just a c, there it is. So those are the numbers I wanna plug in. Cosine of b plus b, well, what was my side b? Back to the picture, side b was uh, just a plain six. 
Six squared is 36. What was A? A was a simple nine. Would that be 81? And then uh, B squared minus A squared minus C squared. C was, oh, I did that one already. That was the nine. What am I missing? The A, I didn't do the A. That's an 11. That's 121. I, I, I changed the order, but it's, it's still the same thing. I flipped those two. All over two times, what was A again? A was the 11, right? 11, and what was C? C again is a nine. I feel like I'm all by myself. So 36 minus 81 minus 121. Somebody give me that number, 36 minus 81 minus 121. Negative 166. Negative 166, I remember that number. And, and then what's that's 22 times nine. So what's, what's the bottom, 22 that's, times? Oh, we're so gonna say. I can't hear you. Oh, so it's negative 198. Oh, it was a negative. Yeah, negative how much? Oh, wait. Yeah, negative 198. 98? Yeah, 98. So that becomes positive 166 over 198. So let me put that in the category. 166 divided by 198. So the cosine of an angle is equal to that. So second cosine of that answer says that it was a 33.0. So 33 degree angle pitch. You know what? That's a standard pitch for a truss, 33 degrees. So I'm going to put approximately angle B, approximately 33 degrees. So we did four good problems. So we are, I'm not going to fill in this chart for you. You can go to the PowerPoint and fill this in. These are just some suggestions. No, they're not really suggestions. We've dealt with uh, side, 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 and we dealt with side, angle, side. That was this one, we've done that one, and we did this one. He has not given us side, side, angle. That means you're having a side, like that's five, and that's eight. And then I know I have one angle, like I can call that uh, 25 degrees, maybe. So that's a side, side, angle. I don't have this side right here there's some steps here that you can fill in. And, but the thing is nobody remembers this. Nobody remembers all these details. So we're always hoping we can work with the side, side, side or side angle side and not have to go through all of that. But I'll let you fill in that chart. Um, I kind of don't memorize them very well either. This does take me to the formula. So at least I'll, I'll post this video up to everybody so you know we looked at one formula. It's a very simple formula named after a, a mathematician named Heron. And so for any triangle at all, it's kind of like this mystery. And all you know is it has sides, A, B, C. So you don't know any angles. You just know all the sides. And it's not a right triangle, so you can't do one half base times height because you don't, you'd have to find out what that height would have been. And sometimes that height is hard to find. You need trig. Well, Heron came up with this formula that all I do is add up the three sides. And well, he called that a semi perimeter because what you're doing, you're adding up the three sides. That's called the perimeter. You take half of it, that's half of your perimeter. Now, why do I use that? Because that number goes in this formula right here. You basically are taking your semi-perimeter and you take that semi-perimeter multiplied by itself taking away A, itself take away B, itself take away C. So the hard part first is to find half of the perimeter. Once you find half the perimeter, then you know you're going to have to take that perimeter times the perimeter minus one of the sides times that per half a perimeter minus the other side times that half a perimeter minus the other side and magically take the square root of it. Now, I, this guy is a genius. 
is the genius. And so it's just three subtractions, but you're using the semi-perimeter four times. So let's finish do one, and then I'll call it a day. You, you want to derive it, go ahead and finish the PowerPoint or watch the last year's videos posted already. I think I did it. We have the distance as a snow, as a snow, as the crow flies from LA to New York. That means it's a straight line. Straight line, that's how a crow flies, is 2451 miles. And then from New York to Montreal, well, that's north. So actually, I think it's north. Montreal, I can't remember if it's northwest or northeast. We'll just call it that. Is three thirty one, and then from Montreal back to Los Angeles is two four two seven. There's your side side side, right? So first thing we do is find out what S is, which is your perimeter divided by two. So. I guess I could rely on somebody being so nice to add up all those numbers, but I can probably do it faster. I want to add up the two, it's four, two, two, zero, four and a half. Oh, you already did it all? Yeah. The oh, wow, well, you're a you're a you're a trend. Let me write that, type that in though. Two four what? Zero? No, two six zero four point five. Two six zero four. Ah shoot. Two six zero four. Let me hold that in there. Point five. That. Point what? Point 0.5. Okay. I'm going to lock it in there. Back to my paper here. So my area of that triangle will be the square root of my, he said, 2604.5 times 2604.5 minus each of those sides. So it was, A was 245.1. 245.1. Then I got to take the 2604.5 and subtract the 331. Then I got to take the 2604.5 and subtract the, the long one, 2427. And that'll give you the answer. And it's, it is, it's simple. It's, it's, it is simple, but it's better than doing trig. I'll, let you key that in and you should be getting approximately, the area should be approximately four, 401,000 and 700 square miles. See if it works out. And uh, I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Yes, sir. It was um, 400. Hi, Joseph. Thanks for your help, Joseph. Not a problem. But yeah, it was 460. It worked? Yay for Joseph. Yeah, pretty much. All right. I, I'll give you some extra credit for keying that in. Uh, you, you and Emilio. Have a good one, sir. Have a nice day, sir. You too.